Now, let us continue. I would use the opportunity. We now have the privilege of having Professor Chidi Oswagu. Now, Professor Chidi Oswagu is going to take us on the journey of the program and the genocidal war against Biafrans. He's going to look into the Biafran heroes and the heroines. So, Professor Chidi Oswagu, um, you may take the floor for five minutes and take us through that the history, or rather the Biafran history, that is where. And while we are doing that, please, if we have uh, Professor Charles Effion, the uh, son of the late uh, Biafran leader, if he's there as well, he should be getting ready to speak after Professor Chidi. Oswago. It is now a tale of professors. I wish to be like you one day. So, Professor Chido Oswago, thank you very much. And uh, you may now address us. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome everybody that is listening to this event. <clears throat> we are here to commemorate our heroes, our kinsmen, our loved ones that we are lost as a result of the Biafra War of 1967-70. But we are also on the verge of a, a similar or a more horrendous crisis. So it is in, important to ask ourselves, what the root of all this? What the root of the war that led to the um, deaths that we come on read today? And I want to introduce everybody listening to a two-volume book, this book. The name of this book is Documents on the Decolonial. Now, we will move back to Professor Chidi Oswagun. Professor, I think you're back. Um, let me quickly, yes. can you quickly unmute yourself and um, mm -hmm. you know, finish your contribution? I am unmuted. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, you know, my Nigerian factor, I got uh, <laughs> sealed off. Now, what I was saying, we need to get back to the root of the problems that we have been into maybe for the last 400 years. The problem that marks us out among the African people are to put to be dealt specially. But for the Nigerian situation, we have to start with what the book I introduced here, British document on the end of empire, series B, volume seven, Nigeria. We get the following information from that book. They are the classified British colonial documents on the process of decolonization. Britain made a resolution, a resolution never to grant regional autonomy to the Middle Belt. That is the root of the crisis, the wars, and so on we are going through. They use the word sine qua non, that instead of granting Nigeria independent, uh, uh, splitting the Middle Belt from the Northern region, they will not grant Nigeria independence. The British said, instead of splitting, giving the Middle Belt a region as recommended, or the willing commission was about to recommend, it, recommend they would not grant Nigeria independence. And why did they? take this resolution in effect not to grant Nigeria free independence. 
and came up with this idea of unfree freedom. They said they needed a dominant north to maintain Nigeria as part of informal British empire. These are documented facts in this book. In effect, the British never wanted to grant Nigeria independence and they never did by putting this precondition as a sine qua non. But they did grant the Fulani independence, but it didn't happen on the 1st of October, 1960. It happened on 30th September, 1960. And the Igbo, who we are in the military particularly, and we are the subalterns and carrying bags for the British, we are present when these events were taking place. I knew what happened. I learned this from a number of sources, but particularly from Brigadier Hilary Njoko, who was the founding commander of the Biafran Army. He said, on 30th September, 1960, there was a mock, mock battle between the Fulani and the British at the battlefield we are looking at defeated Sultan Muhammad Atihiru. In this mock battle, as contrived, the Fulani defeated the British and they ritually returned to them called Sultan Atihiru's flag, which symbolized granting them, returning their independence, returning their sovereignty. The next day, to, they went to Lagos and did all kind of abracadabra, but that was just for the show. In effect, September 30, 1960, the British granted the Fulani independence, but denied the independence to the Negroes because there was a racial element to this. They denied the independence to the Bantu because there was a, ra a racial element to this. And this is the origin of the anglo fulani co-imperialism alliance, which now allowed Amadelo immediately after independence, in fact, a week after independence of the Duet, to announce that he was going to resume his conquest of the ancestors to the sea, which led to the attempt to suppress the thieves in the Middle Belt and to suppress the Yoruba that led to the coup of 66 and the war. So we have to go back to the refusal to grant the Negroes independence by refusing to create the Middle Belt region. So how does this, again, concern the Igbo especially, Eastern region especially, we hope to go back to 1863. Today we found the commanding officers of the armies killing people in Eastern region coming from mostly the Northeast. In 1863, January, Abraham Lincoln abolished slavery in America. Britain fought with the slaveholders of the Southern Confederate and they lost. Once Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. abolished slavery, Britain decided to transplant slavery to Africa. And he needed an army to enforce this. Well, and he decided that this army will not contain anybody um, from Southern Nigeria. That's, that's okay. Uh, just silence. Hello. Prof, go ahead, sorry. Okay. So they formed the Global House Constabulary, which is the root of the Nigerian Armed Forces. So it was forced from the one to target especially the South and particularly the Igbo, white the Igbo. If we recall that Lugard said Igbo are religious and industrious, 
or should never be entrusted with power for British interest, a policy that has been kept to this day, you will find out that that attitude was policy was not developed because of British experience with Igbo in Nigeria. It was developed as a result of Igbo leading the revolution in Haiti and leading the Blacks in the American Civil War on both sides of which Britain lost. Therefore, we have to keep this in mind and realize that the root of the crisis in Nigeria is British resolution not to grant regional autonomy to the Middle Belt. And to solve it, we need to go and deal with that root. What that presupposes is any realistic solution to the Nigerian crisis. Now Britain is pretending that Nigeria is selling because of incompetence of Africans, but that is not true. And it's important we keep this in mind. Nigeria is failed because of the way Britain designed it deliberately as an instrument to maintain informal empire. This is in writing. They didn't intend to give uh, independence to the Negroes, and they never did. Therefore, they struggled to restore the sovereignty of the Negroes, of the Bantu, of the indigenous peoples of Nigeria, must be acted on in alliance of all these Black people. Because isolating the evil will lead to Britain destroying the evil. Because the war that ended us as the Afra war as contained in this document was planned by Britain to take place by or before 1958. Only the governor in the East then stabled resisted and resisted and resisted so furiously that Robert in Lagos was forced to support him, and the army commander in this supported him. So the war, the African war, was planned by Britain before independence. It's documented. So it is important that our people go and read these books, and read available information, and begin to stop producing the Biafran war to a local phenomenon. It is a deep, deep, deep issue. And what is the basis of that issue? It is the struggle of civilization. <clears throat> In 1789, a number of things happened. There was the French Revolution, which abolished the best Europe could have achieved. Time to revive what the Greeks borrowed from Egypt. That was the French Revolution. In the same year, a lot of people are now wrote a book describing the Igbo animal system as paradise that we needed to go back to. <clears throat> In the same year, George Washington became president of America and decided to adopt African war system as model. That's the meaning of the Washington Monument. It's an Egyptian obelisk, and it has meaning which we understand. And those are the things that guided the Igbo, either in Haiti or in America or in uh, Africa, to lead the Africans to reduce, resist the British system. And this is why the British marked us out. We need to understand it. We have to go, if we must secure ourselves, secure the black race, we must pursue Biafra within the context of Pan-Africanism. That's the grand Biafra as a against Petit Biafra, which in fact the British one. Recently, the British embassy here was describing Biafra as Southeast Zone, and then the five Southeast Zona states by name. But that is not Ojuku's Biafra, as I understood when I delivered Ojuku's 70th birthday lecture. We need to understand these things and get our young people to expand their knowledge and horizon so that we will keep Grand Biafra in view, 
while struggling for Petit Biafra. They are snorting all this <coughs> Fulani or whoever we do to us, except that the British are behind them. Thank you very much, and Prof. Documented. They will not give up. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Sorry, I must interject here. Um, you know, the thing about Prof is that it is always a pleasure to listen to you. And that's why I have said to you in private, Prof, you must oblige me for two hours on my show where we will look at all these things because, you know, you are a moving library and I appreciate your knowledge and I appreciate your delivery, Prof. Thank you once more for the sound delivery you have given to us this evening as it were here, or yes, it is already after four here. So, um, I will get to the next guest. I do not know if I have. Um... <laughs> 